78 Sports TV here. So I'm checking out my boy Boxing Beast and Rhymes page. Doing it from Boxing Beast and Rhymes channel. This is Tony Thompson. Chilling with Boxing Beast and Rhymes. Hey, Glenn, you chilling with Boxing Beast and Rhymes. This is that Mayor Hardcore Man Store on Boxing Beast and Rhymes YouTube channel. I don't know if you're on the possible Manny Pacquiao fight with Boy Mayor. How do you feel about that? Well, basically, I mean, it's a fight that still has a potential to happen. Well, we haven't covered the dysfunctional boxers too much recently, so let's get back in. Let's get back in. Now, um, I don't want to upset nobody. I don't want to upset nobody, but there is a growing body of evidence that a lot of what is going to be said in this video could potentially be true. We're talking about a British folk hero in Freddie Mills, who was a light heavyweight champion of the world. Freddie was born in Bournemouth. His old man was a rag and bone man. Any old man. That's basically um, a man who carries around a cart, sometimes accompanied by a horse, and they'd go around to people's houses and take discarded items, and they'd sell them again. A rag and bone man. You don't see them in England no more. You know, Don't knock it. Do not knock it. One white guy I used to work with, he used to hang around with this Irish dude and he'd done something similar, you know, collecting stuff from out of people's houses. Sometimes we just see stuff on the road. And this man has two paid for houses. So, <laughs> let's, don't knock it. He might not look that distinguished in occupation, but, you know, there you go. Yeah, what you do is how you do it. So, Freddie grew up under working class circumstances. I don't have no information on an amateur career. Couldn't find anything. He did fight on the booths though. A lot of fighters, British fighters back in the day, they used to fight on the booths, basically at fairgrounds. They'd have boxing booths, tents, basically these tents. And they'd have a ring in there and they'd fight. They weren't professional or amateur as far as I know. It was what it was, boxing booths. And basically you'd just turn up there and fight whoever was there in the opposing corner. And he probably had loads of fights in the boxing booths, more than likely. And then after establishing himself as pretty youthful, he made his way into the pros. He won the British title, knocking out Len Harvey. Won a British and Commonwealth title, knocking Harvey out in two rounds. And Harvey was a decent fighter, a former British heavyweight champion and a light heavyweight champion. And this fight took place in the stadium of the football team I support, Tottenham Hotspur FC. And it's a packed crowd. The crowd looks like it's going to bust out of the seams. And yeah, he becomes British and Commonwealth champion. Nice little run of form. Takes on... Jack London for the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles. He loses on points. One win later, he challenges Gus Lesnovic for the light heavyweight crown world title. Classic fight. Really good fight. Mills gets floored twice in the early going. He comes back very hard at Lesnovic. Just when it looked like he was turning the tide, Lesnovic turned it on again and finished Freddie off. Within a month's time, he's taken on Bruce Woodcock, a hard-punching British heavyweight champion, big high KO percentage. He loses on points over 12 rounds, and that's just a month after that grueling fight. He's fighting the British heavyweight champion. That's crazy. That's at the Haringey Arena. And he gets knocked out by decent heavyweights, American heavyweights like Joe Baxi. Lloyd Marshall beat him up, Black Murderer's Rope. He wins the European title in his next fight. And he, it was just a grueling schedule. You don't want to be fighting Lloyd Marshall, contesting for the European title, and having three more fights in that same year. Freddie complained of severe headaches. That was known. That was known. He did win the world title from Gus Lesnovich years later, though. In White City Stadium, London. 15 round points decision. Finally won it. One fight later, a non-title fight. Which resulted in a victory he took on Bruce Woodcock. 
for the Commonwealth British and European heavyweight titles and he's KO'd in four. And then in his last fight, Joey Maxson KO's him. Now, nothing so controversial about the boxing career. No, 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 no. But between 1959 and 1965, nine years after Freddie's last fight, there was a killer who specialised in killing strippers. 80 years apart from Jack the Ripper, he was dubbed as Jack the Stripper. Now, the identities of both these killers have never been known, Jack the Ripper or Jack the Stripper. The bodies of at least eight young women, all prostitutes, were found, well, prostitutes are not strippers, but apparently they were prostitutes. Well, some people will say the same thing, <laughs> were found in or around the River Thames after being stripped naked and brutally murdered. The public wondered with its usual morbid fascination when the next victim would appear. The killing ceased and there was never a night for murder. Did he commit suicide? Was he himself murdered? Did he consider his mission completed? The latter two questions began to be asked by amateur sleuths and conspiracy theorists. Some who believed Jack the Stripper to be former world light heavyweight champion Freddie Mills. Mills died in mysterious circumstances in July 1965, the same year as the last killing of the strippers, just a few months after the last stripper's body was found. Freddie's body lay dead in the back of his car outside his own restaurant in a Soho alley. He had been shot in the head and a small caliber rifle was positioned between his knees. Police concluded suicide, but his family maintained murder. I believe on retirement from the game, he moved from Bournemouth, or wherever he was outside London, into London. And, you know, him being an ex-boxer, and a lot of the gangsters, the London gangsters, were very attracted to the boxing scene including the craze. I suppose all the adulation and attention he was getting, you know, I mean, he was probably well respected in that circle. So he knew some unsavory characters. They found him dead in Soho. I don't like Soho. Soho is what a morally upright person would call a den of iniquity. A lot of shit goes on in there, you know. Some people say it's a fashionable, trendy place, but, you know, a lot of um, homosexuality and all types of drug usage, and seedy clubs, prostitution. I don't like Soho. I don't like it. And if that's an area where he frequented on a regular basis, who knows what he was doing, who he was surrounded by, or what he was exposed to. Who knows? I believe he owned a Chinese restaurant and there were some Chinese gangsters who he could have been doing business with they was associated to Freddie. Did they kill him? Mills was a husband and a father, but rumor has it that he was bisexual too. A public indecency charge at the time of his death was pending. This is another rumor. Some people say he was having a private affair with a singer called Michael Holiday, a Bing Crosby sound alike. When a depressed Holiday took his own life, Mills was driven to follow suit, is the rumour. Now, um, I've got to be careful. I don't want to get my legs broken. <laughs> right. Holiday is linked to be associated with the Cray Twins. I'll say no more because I live in this city and some of you don't. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Mills was seeking a pistol to deal with some personal issues he had. He managed to loan a rifle from a friend at a fairground. And that's the gun that was found in the car at his death. It's said by an author, a former gangster, whose book was never published about Freddie Mills, that the boxing fraternity back in those days was like a Masonic circle. And nobody wanted to talk about what was said during those times. Some say Freddie feared the police were closing in for the stripper murders and he decided to take his own life rather than face trial. 
He had been suffering from dizzy spells and bouts of depression for some time. That's no doubt from his boxing career. I've seen documentaries where he was getting severe headache or migraine. You know, like I said before, it wasn't just the pro bouts. Them guys spent years on them booths as well. Brutal fights, little recovery time in between them. Freddie took a lot of punches and landed a lot too. It was said that Freddie Mills was unable to control his violent inner self at the point of sexual climax. Nipper Reed, head detective in the police investigation of Freddie Mills' death, he believes it was suicide. Reed is the detective who subsequently arrested the notorious Cray twins and helped to secure them life sentences in prison. Reed himself, he says Freddie was not Jack the Stripper. Reed explained the confusion by revealing that the chief suspect was, like Mills, a married man and a former boxer in his 40s, who also committed suicide in mid-1965. That man has never been named. 